Bueno, buenas tardes. Um, creo que preciso hablar en, en inglés, pero uh, quiero presentarme como Irene Bosch. Yo soy venezolana, tengo más de 30 años trabajando en Estados Unidos y vengo a hablar de este lado porque soy muy pequeña y nadie me va a poder ver. Más <laughs> bien. Ok, so I'm going to switch uh, in English mode and my talk is going to be about diagnosing the NS1, which is a non-structural protein of Zika and Dengue, and be able to separate them and distinguish them, and also to do that in, in, uh, in the same time with chikungunya, because as you know, the, the challenge of this epidemic is that it's not only Zika, but it's Zika, Dengue, and chikungunya, and that's what we, were, uh, we learned today. So, if somebody can help me with the slides to pass the next one, or should I do that? Uh, I only have, I, I, I really have one. Don't. Okay, aquí atrás. Bien. Aquí. Okay, so the talk really has one slide, which is this one. And I was told to talk for a few minutes. So I promised to only talk for four to five minutes, but in order to show you this slide, I just need to go back and explain a little bit of how we did this. So, the, the whole point is that um, es como un sándwich de queso, donde el pan tiene un anticorpo que, y el queso es la NS1 y el otro pan está en el papel de la nitrocelulosa. So this is a typical sandwich test in which you will have an antibody that will recognize the circulating protein in the blood or in the human body fluid. The first antibody is going to be linked to a nanoparticle which is made out of gold, it could be silver, and it has color. So it, all, it, it works like a test for pregnancy. And what you see here, and I wonder if I can just uh, show the, the light. Okay, and what you see here is the, 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 gold, the gold salts that have the antibody mixed with the sample and in, in one side you have a dengue sample and in the other side you have a Zika sample. So by looking at this pattern you have test areas in which you can then distinguish uh, that, that person or patient or even mosquito had either Zika or dengue. So this is what I came here to talk about. So in the next slide shows the multiple people that take the effort to do this. We are actually uh, a group that studies dengue pathogenesis for a long time. This is in Massachusetts. I didn't bring the picture of Boston, but you're all welcome to come. It's a nice city in the summer, but cold city in the winter. And this is the head of the lab, um, Lee Gerke, uh, right here. And as I said, we are a big team of engineers and biologists because we need the engineers to engineer the gold particle as well. And the biologists like me will take care of the antibody as we elegantly heard from um, the last two talks. It's very hard to get monoclonal antibodies that see specific parts of the virus. So we were able to distinguish the four different serotypes of dengue. And I'll just go quickly through the motivation. Of course, we want an early sample, early testing. Of course, this is the ideal world. We know it's really hard, but we want that. And um, of course, we want to use it as quick as possible to address the outbreaks. And um, we all know that serological testing follows the detection of the virus itself, okay? So we're not talking today about serological testing. We're talking about the virus through their secreted protein called non-structural protein one that we saw. So these are basically the, the strategy. Either you have a direct method and or you have a later indirect method. And we're focusing on this part and in particular on that that protein that circulates. It just sheds, it comes off. So it, you can catch that. All right. So we wanted to develop this cheese sandwich test, but we all to do it in a very small format, so I brought it to show you. Uh, it has eight pathogens in one run, and it looks like a matchbox like this. And 
it, in each of these lines, there is a detector. So we have dengue, one, two, three, four, chikungunya, we have Zika, and we have Ebola. All right. It has to be simple, it has to be fast, and it cannot require anything else. This is it, only the sample and the, and the test. Okay, fine. So how do we do this? The only way to do that, of course, is to go where the epidemics are. They're not in Boston, they're not in California, they're in every part of the world, but not in the United States. And this is just to tell you that how difficult it is because you have a window of opportunity that is where the NS1 is present, not later. Later you have IgMs or you have IgGs, but only in this window. And more what I'm learning is that even without fever, so it's going to be hard to catch patients in that window of opportunity. All right, so the first goal was to have a pattern. Uh, we do this for dengue, one, two, three, four, and I'll just show you the approach. Basically, it's a long, I just want to show you what the approach is. This took three years, so I'm here not only because of the epidemic of Zika, because we've been working this for a long time through NIH funding, so thanks to NIH, but um, thanks to also the collaborators. But in, in a way, um, this, it's a long story that I'm not, I'm not going to go in detail today, but it starts with this wonderful individual here, a mouse, a camondongo, no? A camondongo. Uh, and then we end up with a series of screen that we learned today that only 28% of the repertoire is against NS1, and only 2% of that repertoire is specific to each serotype of dengue. So this really stringent string, uh, screen ends up having an a antibody that we can functionalize the nanoparticle. This is what we call the dipstick, and this is just consists of putting here your uh, antibody, one of the antibodies, here's an anti-mouse so that you can see the test running, and in this part it, it goes the nanoparticle with the other antibody. So it turns out that NS1 forms a dimer, and the immunodominant sites for this to work ended up being different epitopes. So, so much about immunology, yes, it's very important because it, it is what it is. It's actually different parts of the molecule allow the sandwich to work because the antibodies bound to the different parts of the molecule. And this is how it looks when you run dengue one, two, three, and as you can see, each lane detects each serotype and at the end there is a pan, meaning doesn't matter which serotype, it lights up in the test area. And each of the strings tells you what serotype it is. So hopefully one day, if we have this, we could monitor epidemics in the way that it should be, which is knowing the serotypes. Not two years later, but real time. And then the phone takes a picture of that, because it's little, it's this big, and puts a dot in a map so that you can, so civic response to epidemics would be possible because almost all of us, we have this today. So we could monitor the, the presence if we had access to this kind of paper diagnostics. This is the origin of the Zika test. This basically came literally a week ago. And what it is is that in the first row, there's one antibody that bound really well to a Zika, a Zika epitope. And this other antibody bound really well to the other. So in the result, uh, it's one test with three dots, two tests and one control that allows with one, one only one stick to detect which patient would have dengue or Zika. So, and just to finish, we added chikungunya because as we learn from the doctors and epidemiologists, chikungunya is a very important epidemic here in Brazil. So, here we detected chikungunya, not with NS1 because it's an alpha virus, it doesn't, ha doesn't have NS1 like a flavivirus, but through envelope. So we are able to add that here, this is positive controls and negative controls, and these are different pairs. So we have not only one test, but multiple tests. So we're welcome to work with the physicians here to have a pilot test on this. So this is the, the device. So I'll pass it so whoever wants to see it can see it. And yeah, you can pass it, thanks. And the conclusion is that yes, we can do rapid diagnostics. 
it's possible to do it. We could actually do that to monitor mosquitoes because the C636 secret NS1, but we mostly want to uh, specifically address patient and the possibility to use this. And as we all know, this will have to be a collaboration, of course, and we hope to do that. We hope to do that. We hope to uh, address the problem in, on the pregnant women, of course. And we are detecting and distinguishing this dengue. And as you know, Seek is very similar. So we have more and more antibodies coming our way. And hopefully through the NIH promise of making us able to work. Where's NIH? Oh, there he is. <laughs> if NIH really <laughs> disperse the fundings, um, and, and they will, and they should, we will have more and more antibodies available for, for testing. So these are new threats. It's not going to be the last one, but it's definitely a very important one. And it's not anymore Zika alone. It's Dengue, Zika, and Chikungunya. OK, and make sure we don't come to the problem of cross-reactivity. So we hope to address it, and we did. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>